as a lot of the world lives off of kerosene. You can cook with kerosene, you can light with kerosene, and you can heat with kerosene. And, you know, not depending on electricity, as a backup, 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 it's kind of a nice position just to have. They're inexpensive, and I'm going to be going through it with you one at a time. Um, you can cook with kerosene, you can bake with kerosene, and you can can with kerosene. So to have these little stoves, there's some real advantage to that. To use a kerosene lantern that's been pressurized, and I'll be showing you that in another video, for lighting is an interesting option so that you have modern lighting without electricity. And if you're in a colder region, to have uh, kerosene as a heater is a, a nice convenience. So again, if you have kerosene stored, which is also nice, it's not like gas, which goes bad. Uh, kerosene is more of an oil. Uh, it can be stored long term, it doesn't explode. Um, some real advantages. I want to show you for an emergency situation or an off-grid situation why one of these little kerosene stoves would be fantastic. There's no moving parts really. It's a gravity fed system where you've got a bottle of kerosene over here and it flows down this tube. And these are simply uh, knobs with a, a, a screw in it that's a needle valve. And the further out it comes, the more kerosene is going to flow into this wick. This stove can be purchased either with legs or without legs and can sit on a, a bench. The burner comes out, and they call this a catalytic converter. And then what you have simply is a wick. Okay? That's all there is to it. Kerosene flows down that tube, soaks up the wick, and you burn the kerosene off the wick. And they say that if you give this enough time, and you soak this, and then when it gets really old, flip it over and burn it on this side, that this can last over a decade. Okay, Where we get into trouble is two areas. We don't let it pre-soak long enough. Okay, So you got to give it time to soak. And then to shut it off, you don't blow it out. You extinguish the, uh, you, you shut off the fuel and let it burn itself out. And that will greatly um, prolong the life of your wick. While we're at it, let me show you how to fill up the, just as a little spring thing. And it sits right in like that. Very basic, really no moving parts. To cook on this is real simple, just open up your valves, a couple of twists, give it some time so that both wicks will uh, soak up. Remember, this is a gravity flow system, so it should be level. When I first started this somewhere else, I didn't have a level, and my kerosene wasn't going into this burner. I put it on a level surface, and it all worked fine. Okay, I just wanted to show you what I meant by a saturated wick. See how that's all wet now? Now it's ready to light it. You can also just lift this up like this. I was doing it for demonstration purposes and just light it like that. That'll also work for you. And when you first light it, it tends to smoke, but that'll stop. It's a nice little stove to have on the side. As you can see, it's no longer smoking. It only smokes in the very, very beginning. And when you want to adjust the heat, 
it's just a very small turn in the dial, an eighth of an inch will do it. And I was showing you how to light it for demonstration purposes with it all open, but you can just lift this up like that, okay, and light the wick that way and, and not remove any of this. They're real nice. They're very inexpensive. It's a good thing to have um, tucked away. And you can have, you know, a couple of 55-gallon drums of this, and you'll have your cooking needs met, you'll have your lighting needs met, and you'll have your heating needs met, all without electricity. When I first got involved with kerosene heaters, I was very, very unimpressed with them. Uh, they gave me headaches. Uh, it, was, it was just bad. Doing further due diligence, I realized that the whole problem was me. I didn't have the wick adjusted properly, and I didn't have the machine broken into. So I, there's a lot of good information out on YouTube about kerosene heaters. So I'm just going to do this kind of like an introduction and show you how to get these very inexpensively. But a, a couple of things first off. You need to have really good kerosene when you burn these. Okay. Second, you need to burn a tank or two um, of kerosene outside. Okay, that's going to break in the machine and season it. It's going to burn off the oils that the manufacturer had used in manufacturing it. Uh, there's two types of kerosene heaters, by the way. These are called radiant heaters. They are cool to the touch on the back and the sides. They get hot on the top, but uh, you can pretty much put them up against the wall with just a little bit of clearance. They're made for small areas, small rooms. And if it's a large room, go ahead and put two in there, one on either side. Kerosene heaters are designed to be burned full out. Okay. Uh, there's no low setting or medium setting. And that's why you have to have kerosene heaters sized for the application that you're using. And there's primarily two types. Radiant heaters, these smaller ones that are rectangular in shape. And then there's convection heaters, which are the round ones that everybody's familiar with. Uh, they burn very hot, and those are used for very large rooms. Another reason for kerosene heaters, even if you have wood stoves, um, you may not be able to get to the wood easily, say it's an ice storm, or you may not be able to store uh, wood on your property, or kerosene. They're saying that a wheelbarrow of wood is equivalent to one gallon of kerosene in BTUs. So, and you may not have wood available in your area, so kerosene would also be a good idea. I also like kerosene because these require no electricity at all. There's no fans blowing. There's no, um, you can light them with a match. They're, it's, it's a wonderful idea. Doesn't send up smoke. Kerosene heaters. Another thing is purchase them now. Purchase them before you need them. Both of these were purchased off of Craigslist. This one's $20 and this was $40. Also check out yard sales. Uh, during the summer, you're going to—they're not thinking about it, and they're just getting rid of them. During the winter, you're going to pay full retail, 180, 250 dollars, and you want to have a couple of these. Also, every year you want to uh, change out the wick if you're using this for a primary heat source. I would crack the window, you know, maybe an inch or so to allow fresh air into that room. And these heaters only smoke really when you turn them on and when you shut them off. They tell you not to move them when they're burning, but if you start these outdoors and roll them in on a little wagon, and then before you shut them off, you know, burn them out, uh, do it outside, you won't have that kerosene smell. These things burn really, really efficient. Again, if you have a good wick, clean kerosene, you're burning the flame at the proper height. One last small thing, keep this tray really clean 
from uh, dog and cat hair and that kind of thing if you have animals because this draws air in and up through the center of this machine. Uh, these things are great. They're very inexpensive. Like I said, they don't require electricity. They sip kerosene. Uh, I burned both of these out on a tank and I forget how long. I, it was unreal. 14 hours and 12 hours. It, it was just Pick these up, get yourself a bunch. If you recall, I've already shown you how you can heat your house with kerosene, light your house with kerosene, and cook with kerosene. What this video is going to be about is how to store kerosene. During a disaster, you want to have a good deal of kerosene on hand, whether it be a hurricane, an earthquake, an ice storm, even if it's unemployment. It's nice to know that you have your winter heating paid for in advance. Let me show you how I do it. If you were to store large amounts of uh, propane or gasoline, it's very dangerous. They're flammable and explosive. This is 1K kerosene. Let me show you. It's actually an oil. You can take a burning match and it'll be extinguished. in kerosene. If that were gasoline, the outcome would be entirely different. You can purchase kerosene by the gallon at Lowe's or Home Depot. Even Walmart carries it on a seasonal basis. And this was running me around $11 a gallon. But if you were to call up a uh, fuel supply company, they'll sell it to you at 100 gallons or more and bring out the truck. And I got a, I'm in the South, gave me a, a price point of $4 a gallon. So it's really worthwhile having a truck come and deliver 100 gallons or more at a time. Let me show you how I store kerosene. I wanted an inexpensive system. And so I went on Craigslist and I found a fellow that was selling 53 gallon barrels for $20 a piece. And it's real important that you know what was in the barrel. Um, this had a fiberglass compound in it, but the contents were in a plastic bag protecting the barrel. You want to make sure that your barrels are clean. Um, also, I was real concerned about uh, ground contamination. I didn't want my water, if, if this started to leak, going into the water table. So I placed it in a cattle trough. This is two feet deep, it's three feet wide, and eight feet long, and it will hold four of these barrels. I also wanted a barrel that didn't have the two inch opening, okay? I wanted full access to it, so I wanted barrels with a uh, spring clamp. Let me show you how that works. Just take off the clamp. Now I have full access to the container. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people are talking about, you know, these pumps to get the contents out. Well, I don't want to have to rely on electricity. I don't want to rely on mechanical seals and this and that. I wanted something very simple. No moving parts. I can just dip out the kerosene, transfer it into a one gallon container. I wanted to be able to uh, refuel my heater, my stove, and my lantern. I would definitely put this into a shed with a locking door. I'd make certain that a truck with a hose could gain access to it and keep the sun off of it. Just a few suggestions. I'll catch you on the next one.